Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Up to date I have a brand new Hornby EMU to unbox for you. I say this is a new EMU, technically the model has been around for quite a while, but it's never been seen like this. So the model is this, something I've been asked a lot about. Will you review the Eurostar? Finally, yes I will. So it's a Eurostar train pack, but as you can see, it's a Eurostar train pack unlike any other because this is in the sort of, well, I'll call it the Beatles yellow submarine livery. Uh, basically, this really did happen in real life. I'll talk more about it later on. But yes, essentially, a real life Eurostar train was decorated up to recreate scenes from that uh, famous Beatles movie. And I'll be fascinated to see how Hornbeat went about this. It sounds like a very, very complicated thing to achieve. And the thing that makes this even more amazing is the price. So I paid £99 for this. It's £99 from Hattons. Uh, I don't believe they have the train packs in stock anymore, which is a pity. Come on, Holmby, make enough to go around. Although I believe the train set is still available, so I'll put links down below. The RRP was £109.99. Now think about that. This is a four-car set. One of those cars is a locomotive, and all of those cars have such a huge amount of complex decoration. Some of the manufacturers would charge us £200 or more for that level of decoration, but not Hornby, and for that I think they really, really need to be applauded. What fantastic value for money. So yes, this is a slightly older model. Yes, the level of detail may not be amazing, and yes, I probably don't have the highest of expectations for this Locos mechanism, but at £99, that's all on the table. No one's trying to suggest otherwise. I just really have a good feeling about this. So let's find out what this is like. £99, the expectations are low, but I actually think I'm going to be pretty impressed when I see the decoration, or so I hope. So let's get this out together, let's have a good time, and hopefully this will impress us all. Here we go. First things first then is the packaging. As you can see, the artwork on the front here is absolutely phenomenal. And this just goes back to what I was saying the other day about quality packaging. Even if I had no interest whatsoever in the Eurostar, if I walked into a model shop and saw this box looking like this, I wouldn't be able to help but look twice at this. And plus it's got the Beatles on it. I mean, I don't know anybody that doesn't like the Beatles. Um, although I suppose if you didn't, it's not something you'd want to admit because you'd probably be like stoned or something, wouldn't you? Anyway, yeah, fantastic artwork. Let me turn the box over and show you the back because there is a little bit of history. If you were wondering about how this livery came to be and that sort of thing, feel free to pause and read that because it is very, very interesting, although I will talk more about that later on. Then down at the bottom, you can see you can buy an extra couple of coaches to make this up to, well, it's not a full train. Obviously, the Eurostars are much larger than this, but it's a six coach set, yeah, as opposed to a four car set. I believe in real life, the design on each coach was the same on both sides. I don't know, I can't remember the source where I got this information from now. I'm sure I read or heard this somewhere, but I'm not 100% certain, so take it with a pinch of salt. But yes, I believe this model actually has a different design on both sides of each coach in order that they can represent as much of the train as possible within this reasonably small train pack, because don't forget, in, in real life, the Eurostar would have up to like 14 coaches, I think, or something like that. Yes, they were very, very large. Anyway, yep, yeah, not an awful lot else to see. Oh, well, I say that. I mean, the box is worthy of a study in itself, but I'm not going to put you all through that. Let's open this box. I've not opened it yet, but I'm very excited to do so. So let's see. You see, you see what this packaging has done. I'm not interested in DMUs particularly. Sorry, EMUs. Ah, I got it wrong. I'm not particularly interested in the Eurostar. Uh, least of all this model. I mean, it's an older model, probably not that impressive in terms of detail. And yet, because Hornby have done this, because it's such an interesting idea and looks so darn good. I just couldn't help, but I didn't even consider it when I placed my pre-order. I just thought, yep, yeah, got to have that. Man, no egg box. Hornby have done away with the egg box. That paper packaging was no good, I thought. It damages models and such. Now, the environmental consideration is an important one. That's very, very true. But this is a collector set. All these train packs are for collectors. Who do you know that throws away the packaging? The packaging is just as valuable as the stuff inside in most cases, particularly things like this where they haven't made an awful lot. You're not going to be chucking the packaging away. And look, this is just such a, a reasonably small quantity of plastic. Compared with the product itself, I mean, what's the difference given 100 years? It's all going to be in the ground then, isn't it? It's not the way it should be. And I'm not saying that's the way I want it to be, but realistically. Oh, so that's a very negative thing to say. Forget all that. Right. 
Well, first of all, <laughs> I've just spotted this little accessory bag. Not got the greatest feelings for this, I must say. It looks like a couple of spare traction tyres. Uh, so yeah, obviously this thing is probably going to be running on traction tyres. I've heard horror stories about the mechanism in these, uh, so I won't be too impressed if it is a, a nasty little ratty mechanism. But again, £99, you're not going to complain too much. Anyway, now this has still got the plastic wrap around it, but just look. I can tell already what an amazing, amazing finish this thing has on it. How do they do it? How do they do it for £99? And this is not mass produced either by the sounds of it. Right, let's pull this top car out. I've no idea whether this is the motorised one or not. Look at this, the packaging is brilliant. Look, there's like covers over the bogies to protect those. That is marvellous. And the printing is very interesting indeed. I am not familiar, I don't think, with this printing method. It can't just be tampo printed, can it? Or can it? I'm not too sure. I can see sort of horizontal streaks going across the actual printed sections of the artwork, so I don't know whether that indicates as to how they did this. I must say, I'm not entirely sure. But it doesn't look bad, does it? It doesn't look bad for the price. It doesn't look terrible at all. It's not sort of like terribly high shine or even terribly high resolution or anything like that. I suppose my close-up lens will do a better job of showing that later on. But it's not too bad. The model itself feels reasonably heavy. This is not the power car. I can see that none of the axles are driven, I don't believe. And yet the weight feels reasonably good. The level of detail seems okay. We'll look at the detail later on. It's certainly at least on par with that Wego train set that I bought from Mahano. Although obviously the decoration is miles ahead and also the quality looks a bit better as well. This is much heavier and more solid. Right, let's have a look at car the second then, shall we? Let's see what this one is. Now I'm not, I should say, I'm not familiar really with the yellow submarine film. It's not something I've actually seen. So these scenes that these coaches and cars depict are not going to be all that familiar to me. So yes, I know. I should probably try and watch it now, now that I've got this but at this point I have not. All right, there we go, look at the printing. I mean, from any sort of distance, it looks fine. I reckon my close-up lens is gonna be quite cruel to this, but given the complexity, and again, given the price, I don't think they've done a terrible job at all. Look at this side, cool, blimey. Wow, the Beatles were crazy, weren't they? I don't think any Beatle fan would mind me saying that. <laughs> but in a good way. I mean, if they weren't crazy, they wouldn't have put out half the stuff they did, including this unbelievable film, by the looks of it. So that's very nice. Again, reasonable weight to that. All metal wheels, I should say, I've noticed on the coaches. You'll notice that they also share... There's a special name for coaches that share a central bogey, isn't there? I've forgotten what that is now. Ignorant Sam again. There we go. But yeah, this one looks pretty good. What does this say? Eleanor Rigby. Well, that I have heard of, obviously. Although I'm not going to break into song for obvious reasons. Let's have a look at the other end. Here we are. Hey, Bulldog. Look at this. They are very, very, very complex, it must be said. Unbelievably so. Okay, well, it looks like I've unwittingly saved the best until last. Let's take a look and see what the power car is like. I'm not expecting Mahano quality for the mechanism, by the way. I very much doubt this will be all-wheel drive. But we'll have a look at that later on. Anyway, decoration, really, really nice. Visually, it's very similar to the first dummy power car that I pulled out to begin with. Cool, I'll look at the other side there. It looks marvellous. It is reasonably heavy, it must be said. And if I tip it upside down, yes, I can see it is just the rear bogey that's driven. And it does indeed have a set of traction tyres fitted to it. Although it's not the standard motor bogey by the looks of things that Hornby use on all of their little diesels and even tender drive units. It looks like it's designed specifically for the Eurostar, which is interesting. All-wheel pickup, though, I can see that straight away. So, this looks marvellous. And underneath, oh, there is just a slip of paper. This is the instructions. Here we go. Operation and maintenance. Uh, on this side, then, yeah, it's all the usual stuff. Introduction, lubrication, hints of running. Ah, and on the back, that's quite important, actually. That shows you how you couple the different coaches and such together. Okay, that's fine. Well, that's worth a look. And it also tells you about removing the body, presumably for DCC fitting. So that's all good to have. And that's all very good. I will say that the clarity and the finish of the sort of vinyl wrap that they've recreated on these models, I don't think it's like ultra, ultra impressive. But when you consider how infrequently this sort of thing is attempted in model form, and it's certainly not something I've ever seen, in fact, I don't think it's too bad at all, although we'll let the close-up lens decide. Anyway, here's a little bit of history on the Eurostar, and when we've done that, we'll take a close look at some of this stuff, and that I'm really looking forward to.
So the Eurostar locomotives are known as the British Rail Class 373 and despite being known as British Rail locomotives, these EMUs were actually a French design and they are part of the TGV family. Uh, check out my video here in the top right to learn more about TGVs. The sets were constructed between 1992 and 1996 and they consisted initially of two different varieties. You've got the three capital sets which were made up of two power cars and 18 passenger coaches coming in at 387 metres long. That's very close to half a kilometre in length, it's just insane. And then you've got the North of London sets which were made up of only 14 coaches with again two power cars. In 2004, the 22 sets still in operation received an overhaul and refurbishment which included new interiors and the Class 373 can still be seen in operation today on the Eurostar Channel Tunnel service, although they're not alone with some TGV duplexes being used there as well. And they can also be seen on other services, it's not just the Channel Tunnel service, you've got the IZY which is I think a low cost service between Paris and Brussels I believe. Now this livery then, again pause and read the back of the box if you want to know a little bit bit more detail but this livery came from 1999 I believe when the remaining Beatles got together with Apple and they produced a vinyl wrap which recreated scenes from the Beatles film Yellow Submarine. Now the artwork took four months to design and looking at this train pack which just represents a bit of it you can easily see why. It took two weeks to print the vinyl wrap and six days to apply it to the train. It sounds like an absolutely monstrous job in real life of course, but also in model form too. Very, very impressive work. So there you have it then, up close and personal, the Hornby Eurostar train pack. And I'm going to try my best to show you as much of the artwork as I possibly can during this section. So if I do keep cutting to sort of pan shots of the artwork, uh, that's why I'm just trying to show you as much as I can up close. The verdict is overall, for what I paid for £99, this really is not too bad. As predicted, the close-ups are a little bit cruel on the print work. I'm going to take back what I said about the resolution though, because if you look closely, you can see that the resolution is clearly quite good. I will say that the finish is a little bit streaky and a little bit grainy. Now, if I had to describe it, it's a little bit, you know, if you send off to get maybe a shirt printed on and you look really closely at the colour and it looks a bit grainy, it looks very similar to that. Or perhaps if you print with a laser printer and perhaps you're running low on toner or the drum is a little bit dirty, you get that streakiness. It looks a little bit like that as well. I don't really know whether the techniques I've just mentioned are at all similar to the techniques used to print this, uh, but I suppose it could be. Now, I know it sounds like... I'm nitpicking and complaining. Really, I'm not, like I say, I don't think this is too bad at all for the price I paid, but at the end of the day, this is a review, and if the issues are there, it's out of the question not to mention them. But as you can see, the overall finish is not terrible. I'm not saying that. One thing that is amazing is that they haven't just used stickers or transfers or something like that. That would be much easier. No, they're clearly not stickers, and as a result, the quality of the finish is a lot better than you'd expect from a sticker. It's certainly not sort of high gloss like a sticker would be. And also, of course, the really impressive part is that the wrap covers all of the details such as the grills as you can see really quite well actually it's not terribly done at all is it obviously all of this would be totally impossible with just stickers or probably even tampo printing how would you be able to tampo print within these grills and other details i really just don't know yeah overall the print work is fantastic and varied the amount of artwork on this train pack is just absolutely phenomenal i mean there's eight sides here all of them different all of them unique for 100 quid, that is absolutely mind-blowing. And like I say, the quality is surprisingly good when you consider the price. Let's talk about the actual locomotive as a model then. First of all, the weight is reasonable, I would say. It weighs in at 309 grams, which is three BT well tanks. And don't forget, this, this whole pack was £20 cheaper than the BT well tank. Uh, but the loco alone, without any of the other coaches and stuff, weighs three times as much. That is quite impressive. It is quite plasticky. The construction is largely made of plastic, including the pantographs, by the way. So there's no chance of those working if you've got an overhead line or anything like that. No, those are pure dummies, unfortunately. However, we do have metal wheels, as you can see, which is very nice, and that's typical of all of the coaches and every unit, all metal wheels, which is great. The decoration is really nicely as well. Despite most of the detail being just a part of the moulding, you can see that the relevant parts have been picked out with this silver paint, which helps them to stand out quite nicely. It is very much a sort of train set style locomotive when it comes to the detail, so don't expect Hornby Railways detail or anything like that. So if you look at the windscreen, you can see you've got the windscreen wipers there, which are just uh, part of the moulding. They're just moulded onto the transparent plastic. And I also cannot see any interior as far as the actual cabs are concerned either, which is, again, a bit of a pity. 
The lights are represented on the model, although having looked up underneath the body, I can't see any wires going towards the front of the unit. So I don't think this has any lights installed, which is a pity. But again, when we get to the performance section, I could be proved wrong there, but that's my gut instinct, no lights. You've also got other little bits of decoration. You've got running numbers and search, little printed details. Hopefully the close-up lens will do a reasonable job of that. The bogey detail is nice. Again, all just molded, I believe, but it looks reasonably convincing, doesn't it? Overall, it is a step up, I would say, from the likes of the Mahano Wego, both in terms of detail and quality, really. They are quite hefty units, which is really good. In the same vein, the coaches have a reasonable amount of detail to them as well. Again, they're not super detailed or anything like that. For the price, I think you'd be insane to expect it anymore. But they're not terrible. They've got nicely molded roofs, as you can see, with a fair bit of detail to them. And they do actually have interiors. You can see molded seats and even tables inside, which, if you remember, is a lot more than we got with the Mahano TGV. So if you consider the level of detail that is typical of so many train sets, I would say, well, not absolutely astonishing. This is at least above and beyond what you'd usually expect at this price point and because of that I'm actually reasonably impressed and obviously that is to say nothing of all of the decoration that I've already talked about here's a little bit more squeeze a little bit more in yeah how however did they do it that's <laughs> that's that's probably going to be my catchphrase for the video because it is really unlike anything I've ever seen before on a model the amount of decoration is wonderful and I've already spent well far too long looking at this stuff up close and just taking in the level of detail there is a lot to see an awful lot anyway i'll look at it in my own time i'll stop wasting yours let's get them down onto the track i'll have a look at the mechanism not got high expectations for that but it was a hundred quid as long as the thing is reasonably competent and works quite well it could still come out with a decent score right let's do that so there it is then, the very impressive Beatles Eurostar set down onto the track. It's actually reasonably intuitive to put the train together on the track. Uh, the couplings work as they should. Everything seems reasonably free rolling and you can just look at the box and figure out which unit goes where if you really care about the correct order. Now, as expected, the mechanism of these units isn't absolutely fantastic. If we take a look at the underside of the motor bogey, you can see that, nope, there are no proper bearings. Now, it's not absolutely disastrous here because it's metal on plastic, so the wear and tear isn't going to be too great. However, the better quality mechanisms always have proper metal bearings, so it's a pity about that. As you can also see, we do have some rubber traction tyres on the wheels, which is not something I'm a fan of. Check out this video if you'd like to know why I'm not a fan of traction tyres. And also notice that the other bogey is not driven. We only have two driven axles on this whole set. Although the remaining wheels on the locomotive do have the pickups going to them, which is good. Although none of the other units have any electrical contact whatsoever, which does suggest that lights are out of the question. Removing the body was a bit difficult because all the screws were way, way, way too tight. But as you can see, it's a very, very simple chassis inside here. The motor bogey is very simple. It does have a five-pole skew-round motor, believe it or not, according to Humber's website. So that's quite good. But there's no flywheel or anything like that. It really is motor shaft, worm drives, straight to the axles. That's all it is. They are DCC ready, which is something. As you can see, you've got the eight pin socket there and you've also got two large weights on the chassis there, which gives the locomotive a good chance of hauling the four coach or even if you're super lucky and you want to buy the extra coaches, the six coach set. Anyway, as you can see, I have not coupled the locomotive to the train yet because I want to see how it handles itself without any coaches. So for the first time, let's give this a run. It has not yet been run in, so don't expect too much right now, but I'm very curious to see how this will run compared with the Mahano Wego set. Anyway, here we go then. Set it to full. Yeah, it's already set forwards. Here we go then. A little bit of power. Well, I'll tell you what, that's not too bad, is it? I mean... The Wego was dead on arrival, so I suppose this wins by default. That's not terrible. I mean, it's not the smoothest crawl in the world, but it is very, very slow. <laughs> cool. That's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, this is going to be... I mean, if this is geared to run fast, that's not unreasonable, really, is it? Because these trains ain't snails in real life. So the fact that these can crawl too isn't bad. It's not the greatest, like I say. It is a pity that we don't have all-wheel drive. That's kind of a, a standard these days, isn't it? But besides that, I have not too much to complain about here. I mean, this is a train set locomotive, really. If you get a train set that runs as well as this, you haven't really got much cause for complaint, have you? <laughs> not really. Right, I'm going to move the rest of the coaches out the way for now. We'll try this on its own as it goes around the layout, and then we'll try the whole train later on. There we go. 
All right, let's have a look first. See what it speeds like at 50%. Actually, that's not dreadfully speedy, is it, that? So it's a bit of a, a whistle as well. It sounds like it could do with some oil, although it did look like it was plenty lubricated. Uh, yeah, that isn't particularly speedy. Either that or it might just run in and go a bit faster once it has. What's the top speed like? Shouldn't really do that till it's been running, but never mind. Yeah, it's not actually dreadfully fast, although I don't really mind because I do appreciate a sort of slower running locomotive. Although it is a little bit questionable how realistic that is on a sort of Eurostar. But no, that's all right. Uh, let's get it running then, 50% speed. Let's see how it runs. No lights or anything, it must be said. I can't see any lights whatsoever. That's a little bit of a pity. Um, train set stuff is better with lights, isn't it? It's just more fun, more fun if trains have lights. Same with scale electric cars, they're just better when they've got lights, aren't they? But no, it's not a huge deal, I suppose. Again, it goes back to price, doesn't it? They're not a bad price, so can't complain too much. And the thing does appear to be handling the track very nicely, as you can see. Second radius curves, no noticeable slowdowns, certainly no derailments. Remains to be seen if that's true once the rest of the train's coupled up. Fingers crossed it will be. But I'll leave this to run in for 30 minutes in each direction, and I will come back to you once it's done so, and we shall try the whole train together. Okay, ooh, right. Running in has concluded, folks, and yes, this is now much, much faster. It's running way faster than it was when I first showed it. Right, well, no derailments, nothing like that. It went absolutely fine. Let's just do the crawling test one more time, see if it's any better. Ooh. Okay, so no, <laughs> I don't think it's really much better. It is jerking forwards, but again, you know, it's reasonably impressive given the sort of locomotive this is. I think it would be more of a problem if this was a small steam locomotive, which was known for shunting or, you know, small jobs, that kind of thing. It's not too bad, really, I would say. Now, I'm about to couple it up to the rest of the train, although I've got a bit of a confession to make. I've already done it. <laughs> I've already filmed it once, but I'm filming it again because, well, frankly, it got all a bit too graphic. So, yeah, this is literally what happened. So it was derailing, basically, on the curves on Gordon's Hill, the usual culprit. And I decided that the reason for it was that one of the bogies was too tight. And indeed it was, it was too tight. So I decided to get the body off so that I could oil the pivot and see if I could loosen it up a bit. In doing so, I ran my fingers along the inside of the body to remove the body, and the body sliced into three of my fingertips. And no, the one you're seeing right now is not the graphic one. The permanent disability that painted Toy Town is this one and it's the first time I've ever actually had to stop what I was doing to clean blood off the carpet. Of all the crazy experiments I've ever done, uh, playing with electricity, propellers, whatever else, it's this Eurostar that has finally done me in, but I think it'll be fine. I've managed to cut off the circulation with the plaster, so it's stopped bleeding now. I can't remember where I got to, quite honestly, so we're going to do it again. I also noticed that one of the coaches was tickling the trees on the outside line. That's probably my fault for putting the trees too close. So I'm going to be running on the inside line just to give it the benefit of the doubt on the stiff bogey, although it was too stiff. I did eventually manage to get the body off to apply a bit of oil to the bogey, and it's now turning much better, and it was no longer derailing after I did that. Anyway, pulling power was quite good. I measured 0.55 newtons of tractive effort from the locomotive, which is absolutely fine. Yeah, it's totally adequate for this purpose. So let's give this a try and see how it gets on with the four coach train. This is the first time you've seen it. It's not the first time I have. As you can see, it's moving the train absolutely fine. It's actually a bit smoother now, isn't it? Look at that. That's quite nice. So with a load, it's smoother. That's weird. Yeah, it's still not crawling, but that is pretty smooth. I don't believe it would have done that straight out of the box. So that is that is something. I mean, sometimes running in doesn't make an awful lot of difference to a model. Sometimes you can run it in for hours and hours and it performs exactly the same. In fact, that's mostly true. But with this one, there is a noticeable improvement having run this just for 30 minutes in each direction. So bear that in mind if you're initially disappointed with the performance of yours. And also, by all means, encourage your children to tinker with model trains, but don't let them mess about with this one because the bodies are razor sharp and they could well lose a finger. Anyway, here we go. Take it up to 50% speed. Thought that is a bit quicker. And there we go. Very good. That speed is more than adequate now. Then on the inside line, I have the Backman Super Sprinter. There you go. No, it's not Super Sprinter. It's a Voyager. 
two two is it two two one something like that. And then on the inside line we have the Wejo the Wego TGV. Decent set, but not so good a quality as Hornby's. And the decoration is not so good, and the details not quite so good. Otherwise, though, not a bad set either. All right. And now that I've gotten over my gory injuries, I can start to enjoy this again. Beautiful looking set, great, great performance now. The slow speed is okay, but doing the jobs that it's intended for, it's absolutely fine. Good range of speed, plenty of torque. The traction tires suck, but at least they allow the loco to pull what it's supposed to. Mechanism, not the greatest quality. Decoration, very, very impressive. Price, entirely reasonable and also rather impressive. So overall, if this is something you fancy, there's not an awful lot that's stopping me from recommending this to you, to be perfectly frank. It's really not too bad. So let's have a look at some of my ratings then for the Hornby Eurostar set. Now overall I'm not too disappointed in this. Uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. The score perhaps does look a little bit harsh, but as always bear in mind that my scores are not really designed for this sort of basic train set level stuff. The level of detail then, I've given this three and a half stars. Now I gave the Wego set two stars, I believe. This gets an extra half a star because it has like interiors in the coaches and such. And I've actually awarded it an extra star for the decoration, which is obviously really, really good. Besides that, obviously, yet yeah, most of the details are very basic, molded and plastic for the most part, no lights, that kind of thing. The detail isn't that great. Do bear in mind that without that amazing decoration, this model would be getting a 2.5 from me. The performance I've also given 3.5, uh, almost got a 4, but yeah, 3.5 it is. It's nice and smooth, nice and reliable, no cutting out or anything like that. Although the crawl isn't absolutely fantastic and I have had to do some work on some of the bogeys in order to get them around some of my curves without derailing. It could be that the trees were more to do with it, but I'm pretty sure it was the curves as well. However, a little bit of oil on some of the bearings and the bogies turn much better and there's no problem there. Pulling power then is not a problem at all. I feel sure you could build up at least, you know, a, a four coach train and have no problems at all. I measured 0.55 newtons of tractive effort, uh, which should be around 32 coaches on straight and level track. That's just above the Tornado and below the Dapol Class 22, so it's reasonably powerful. The mechanism I've given just two stars. I've docked a star for the lack of bearings, another for the traction tires, and another for the flywheel. On the plus side, it does have the five pole motor and it does have pickups on every wheel on the locomotive also the gauging is 100% spot on 14.4 millimeters across each axle on the locomotive which is absolutely spot on as per the standard very very good Hornby at least they did that right very much so the quality then I've given three stars it does lose a couple of marks because of the plastic construction and the mechanism however the build quality is really really good and I cannot fault it Value for money then for £99, that's the typical retailer price, or £109.99, that's the RRP. I cannot fault this. Yes, it's not the greatest model in the world, but the price absolutely reflects that. And I am left feeling more than satisfied with this for what I paid. It looks fantastic. It's a great piece of memorabilia. It's very unique and it works as it's supposed to. Well done, Hornby. It's not cheap by any means, but it's 100% on value for money. Value for money. That's the key thing. And that's my opinion. Overall then, that is 6.96 out of 10. That's not too bad. Let's put that into the logbook. There you go, 37th above the Batman Patriot and below the Dapol Class 73. Overall, not too bad at all. If you don't mind the lack of detail, I can highly recommend going for this, particularly if you were a fan of the Beatles or the Yellow Submarine film. One thing that would be very nice to see in the future is uh, a sort of more expensive, super detailed version with a better mechanism, with lights, all of those extra details that you'd expect. I mean, this product is not that. <laughs> I think that's fairly obvious, and that's fine, not a problem. But that is a gap in the market, isn't it? A proper Eurostar set with all of the details. Please correct me if I'm wrong, though. Does such a thing already exist? If not, it might be quite nice to see Hornby fill that gap in the market at some point. I'd buy it. Oops, mind out, Borman. Well, there you have it then, folks. As beginner's models, at this price point, they are absolutely fine. As long as you realise that you are buying a fairly basic model when you pick one of these up, 
I don't really see any problem with that. It doesn't say railroad on the box, so obviously do be careful. Uh, you might think you're getting an absolute bargain, Hornby Railways train pack. Mm, it's not quite that good, <laughs> let's be realistic. However, for what you pay, the train pack is absolutely fine and well done for Hornby for pulling off that wonderful livery, which looks really, really good. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Do let me know down in the comments. Is this something that you personally would buy or would you steer clear of it? Do let me know. I might also post a poll on the community tab about this train pack later on. So do check back there if you want to take part. For now though, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I'll go and heal my fingers hopefully for the next review. And I will see you very, very soon. All right, folks. Take care. Look after yourselves. Cheers, everybody.